Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video I'm doing my May wrap up. So I read a total of 22 books I think and technically only one of them was a physical book and the rest were ebooks. Alright so let's just get started. Bro Code by Kendall Ryan. This I gave three to five stars. It was a decent read. I enjoyed it. Then I read Jock Row by Sarah Nye. This is the first book in the Jock Hard series trilogy. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but this I gave five out of five stars. I loved it so, so, so much. I first read it on my Kindle and then I bought a physical copy. That's why I don't really count this as like a physical copy that I had to read because I just bought it as like a bonus. I loved it so, 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 so much. I loved both the characters individually. I loved them as a couple. I found their romance really, really cute and adorable and it was like a really kind of slow burning romance but it was just it was so cute and I love Sarah and I, I just love her books so much and I, this was just my favorite I loved it so much then I read Back River Quiver by Alexa Riley this I gave two out of five stars and the other physical book I read was a Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Mass this is technically book 3.1 in the a Court of Thorns and Roses series and this I gave three out of five stars. I think if you are a true like hardcore fan of the series you will love this book but as someone who has kind of distanced herself from the series and the characters I just found it really boring um, and kind of pointless. I know a lot of people were upset that the fourth book was going to be about uh, I can't remember was it her name like Nesta? I feel like I always say it wrong. People are upset that the fourth book was not gonna follow uh, Feyre and Reese, so a lot of people were mad and I think Sarah J Maas was like okay I'll give you guys like a cute novella <laughs> which was totally pointless in my opinion. I mean if you're a true hardcore fan you probably loved this but it was just boring and not much else really. Then I read The Hardest Fall by Ella Mace, and this I gave 3 to 5 stars. It was cute, but nothing memorable. Pearson by Kay Webster, and this is book 3 in the Four Fathers series, and this is like a novella series that is like super twisted and dark and just like really random. I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. I actually really liked it. It was so over the top. I just loved it. I don't know why. Um, it was great. And then I decided to read the fourth book, which is Wheeler. And this one is by Kier. Is it Kier? Dukey? Duke? I've never heard of this author before. And this one I gave two out of five stars because I was expecting something completely different than what it was. These books you don't have to read in order, but I do. I would say you should because then everything makes more sense. I only read book three and four because uh, book one and two didn't really interest me and to be honest I don't think you need to read book one and book two but you do need to read book three and book four like together in order because book four will make no sense to you whatsoever if you don't. Wheeler was just kind of weird like this book was really weird. I was expecting a romance. It's not really a romance. Not at all. It's more of like a dark, it's actually really dark now that I think about it, now that I'm like remembering what it's about. It's really dark. Oh, then I read Knocked Up by Her Brother's Enemy by Penny Wilder. This I gave two out of five stars. The King's Innocent Bride by Alexa Riley. This I actually gave three out of five stars. I enjoyed it. When You Are Mine by Kennedy Ryan. This is book one in the Bennett's uh, series. This I gave two out of five stars. This has been on my TBR since 2015. And I finally read it, um, and I gave it two out of five stars. Like, I just, I didn't really care. I just wanted to know what happened to the characters and, like, if they ended up together and whatnot. But other than that, didn't really care. So then I read the second book, which is Loving You Always. And this I also gave two out of five stars because I kind of skimmed it just wanting to know what happened to the characters and their story. Then I read Good Girl by Jenna Aston. This I gave four to five stars. I actually really liked it. I know a lot of people, I saw a lot of people's reviews and said they didn't really like it, but I did. I mean, I think I enjoy most of Jenna's books, so I really enjoyed this one. Then I did a reread. I 
reread Rock the Hearts by Michelle A. Valentine. This is book one in the Black Falcon series and this was in my books I wanted to reread in 2018. And when I first read it, uh, it was July 2014 and I had given it three stars and I'm sticking with that rating the second time reading it. Um, I really enjoy this whole series and I really enjoyed the first book, but to me they don't like, there's like something about it that I, I can't give you more than four. I don't know. So then I also reread Rock the Band, which is a novella, it's a 1.5, and this I also read back in 2014, and I had given it three stars as well, and I'm sticking with that rating too for this one, or it's just not more than a three star. But I still really, really love the series, and I do want to continue the reread at some point. Then I read Sheltered by Lix Riley, this I gave two out of five stars. The Wild Air by Karina Halley, this I gave four out of five stars. I really liked this. I literally read this the day after the royal wedding or the day of, I can't remember, but it was like right around the royal wedding. I wanted to read something like royal-ish and I know that Karina Halley has the other book called The Swedish Prince which I have not yet read and I know you don't really need to read them in order but you can if you want. I will read The Swedish Prince at some point, but I really wanted to read this one. And yeah, I gave it four to five stars. I really liked it. Um, it was super cute and fun, yet also like pretty deep. I just really liked it. The characters were great. Yeah, solid contemporary from Karina. Then I read Rebel Air by V. Keeland and Penelope Ward. And this I gave four stars, but I think I'm gonna lower it down to three. I think I honestly spoiled myself with this book. I also saw the plot twist right before it happened. Saw it. I saw it right before it was revealed. I liked it, but for some reason, I don't really want to give it four stars. But maybe there was just something missing for me. I'm not sure how I feel about it. So it's like a 3.5 slash 4 slash 3. Like it's in that area right now. I'm, I have it as a four right now. I might change it before I put up this video, but that's what it is right now. I don't know. And then obviously I read uh, Rebel Hearts, which is book two. And this one I gave three stars. I liked it also. And I was very conflicted on my rating, but this one to me is a solid three. Like I liked it, but I don't think I liked it more than book one. It's a great conclusion to the duology, but I feel like there's something missing. Definitely not my favorite from the duo. I feel like I like their other books more. Then I read Filthy Gods by R. Scarlet and oh, this I gave four to five stars. <laughs> This is a novella. It's like 160 pages or something. It's pretty short. This was amazing and I wish it was so much longer because I would have given it five stars if it was longer. First of all, I love the cover. It's a good romance cover. I don't know why I just really like it. This is kind of a prequel to the series that she has coming out, which is called American Gods, uh, which I'm totally checking out when that comes out. Yeah, this one is really good. It's like a new adult romance and if you love Rose and Connor from the series you will love this one because the parallels are so similar like the comp like you can just compare them and you're like this is like the same thing almost but not really I would have to say filthy gods is probably written better uh, than like Rose and Connor I feel like the characters are a little bit more I mean I guess they have to be more fleshed out because the book is only like 160 pages this was just so good I really loved it and I think I'm gonna buy a physical copy at some point because it was just great and highly recommend it. And then I read a trilogy. I waited so long to read this trilogy because I knew there was a spin-off trilogy that was being currently released. I wanted to like be able to marathon both trilogies. So I waited and the final book just came out I think for that other trilogy so I decided to start this one. So the first book is Ruthless King by Megan March and this is book one in the Mount trilogy and this I gave four out of five stars. I really liked it. I feel like book one is maybe my least favorite out of the three but I still really did enjoy it. It's kind of like a dark mafia-ish but not really kind of complicated. I don't know, I really liked it. It was really well written. I enjoyed the characters. The reason why I didn't give it five stars is just because there was something 
a little bit missing for me and I think maybe it was the like writing I don't know there's something about Megan March's writing that I can't fully commit to I don't know what it is even though her writing is great there's just something about it that I can't I'm like losing connection or something with Defiant Queen which is book two and this one I also gave four out of five stars and then book three which is Sinful Empire and this one I also gave four to five stars. I think the third one is definitely my favorite. It is a great conclusion to the trilogy and I'm really really excited to read the spinoff. So yes those were all the books that I read in the month of May. Let me know how many books you guys read last month and which one was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!